So, um, hello again. I've been taking a little bit of time off uh, from YouTube, um, kind of getting some things in order. Um, I was recently accepted into the Partners Program, but I'm still kind of, um, kind of trying to straighten things out a little bit. And I'm having some trouble with Google, and that'll be a subject of a future video. Uh, but for right now, I am going to read excerpts from a current favorite website of mine called Dickopedia. And you can visit Dickopedia at dickopedia.org. The first excerpt I'm reading is from the entry of Flav of Flav. Throughout his career, Flav has been a strong advocate of impregnating women. As far as scientists can tell, Flav of Flav has eight children, though that number could be a gross underestimate. Flav's playful, light-hearted spirit, which made him popular in hip-hop for so long, has not quite reached the same level of popularity among the children who are now forced to live with both financial difficulty and a genetic predisposition to look and act like Flav of Flav. While Flav has been more than willing to impregnate women, he reportedly has not paid child support for some or all of these children, many of whom are in need of financial assistance for their health and education. Yeah, boy! Regardless, Flav has managed to maintain strong relationships with the various mothers of his children, one of whom is quoted as saying, quote, I'm not even interested in saying hi to him. If he died, I would not go to his funeral. Flav has been such an embarrassment to African-American men that Chuck D went so far as to publicly denounce him. Hillary Clinton, in the late spring of 1971, she began dating fellow Dick, Yally Bill Clinton, despite that, the fact that at the time, he looked like Kenny Loggins after a week-long quaalude bender. Like all great romance stories, Hillary eventually capitulated to marrying Bill after she failed a bar exam in Washington, D.C. and needed something better to do than turning tricks in Logan Square. Antonin Scalia. Antonin Scalia was born in Trenton, New Jersey and attended the prestigious Xavier High School, a Catholic and Jesuit school in Manhattan. After graduating from Georgetown University, Scalia went on to study law at Harvard Law School. Harvard is considered by many to be a good school. It is one of many good schools, and there are many Harvard graduates who realize that attending Harvard does not necessarily make you the smartest person in the room. Scalia is not this sort of Harvard graduate. Dick Cheney. Cheney is subspecies of Dick, known as the Chicken Hawk which is a person who publicly supports a war, but is too much of a pussy to fight in it himself. There is a scene in the movie Office Space when one of the characters, Michael Bolton, is sitting in his fancy car listening to hardcore gangster rap, and then the black guy pulls up next to him and he rolls, and he rolls the window up. A chicken hawk is this sort of person. Scott McClellan. Two years after resigning his job as press secretary, McClellan burst back onto the political scene in May 2008, sticking it to his former colleagues with a memoir entitled, What Happened? Originally titled, Take That, Jerks. The book bluntly accuses President Bush of, quote, self-deception and his administration of maintaining a permanent campaign approach to governing rather than making choices based on what's best for the country. McClellan also describes Bush's selling the Iraq war with an aggressive political propaganda campaign instead of facts, the truth, or other realities. In his book, McClellan scolds the news media for being too accepting of the very lies he himself told them about Iraq, a dick move so audaciously shameless that, it mu that your head might implode if you think about it too long. R. Kelly. In June 2005, Kelly released his next album, TP3, Citizens on Patrol, which included the five-part mini-opera Trapped in the Closet, a song that does not rhyme, has no chorus, and barely contains anything that could be considered music. Naturally, it was a runaway hit. Kelly wrote and produced 17 more chapters and claims to have written as many as another 20 that have yet to be released. He has officially announced his desire to keep adding installments ad infinium, claiming that the series will end when, quote, the aliens say it's over. Not since the 1982 theatrical release of E.T. has the world wished so intently for a full-scale full invasion by extraterrestrials. Simon Cowell. Uniquely, 
While many celebrities become popular despite being dicks, Cowell became a celebrity because he is a dick. Cowell worked at EMI for the time in the 1980s before founding his own label, Fanfare. When Fanfare's com parent company went bankrupt, Cowell took his hard edge, wheeling and dealing executive skills back home, literally. He moved back into his parents' house where he was able to sign less popular artists like his mom to make him breakfast. Later that year, Cowell joined BMG and found major success releasing albums for esteemed recording artists like WWF wrestlers, the Teletubbies, and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Cowell became globally famous as a judge for the television program American Idol, where he provided bullying criticism of game show contestant, contestants whom he deemed less talented than the established performers he was used to working with, such as the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Such obnoxious sarcasm has been promoted by Fox as, quote, candor and has become palatable to American audiences because it's spoken in a British accent. Cowell's unique position on the show allowed him to vastly increase his personal wealth simply by being a bigger dick. Unsatisfied with just being a regular dick, Cowell has actually been coached by publicists to point out that his occupation arguably became professional dick. Kanye West, like many rappers, West grew up in an upper middle class Chicago suburb where his mother was the chair of the State University's English department. His mother passed on a rich vocabulary that West later put to use when he jumped on stage after losing best video at the MTV Europe Awards and said, fuck this, my video cost a million dollars, Pamela Anderson was in it and I was jumping across canyons and shit. Some say Henry Kissinger's great distinction as a public figure was his ability to sound smart, even though most of what he said was wrong. Kanye West's great distinction as a public figure is his ability to sound stupid, even though most of what he says is arguably correct. During a Hurricane Katrina fundraiser in the summer of 2005, West stunned the audience and his co-presenter, Mike Myers, by delivering a rambling and impromptu monologue on government incompetence, ending with the now famous statement, George Bush doesn't care about black people before producers were able to cut to footage of a more white-friendly celebrity, Chris Tucker. Over the years, Wes has crafted a signature style built on clever wordplay and the incorporation of themes into his work that other, that other rappers would deem childish, stupid, or whack. These themes include polo shirts and college. And finally, Barack Obama. It is important to note that Obama is not so much of a dick by virtue of who he is, but rather by what he has chosen to involve himself in, e.g. presidential politics, and the resulting crowd it forces him to deal with, e.g. Joe Biden. Barack Obama is married to Michelle Obama, nay Robinson, with whom he has five children, Sandra, Denise, Theo, Vanessa, and Rudy. Meanwhile, visit the website www.dickopedia.org.